Hello everyone, today we're going to uh, have another c -sharp tutorial. This is going to be an interview type question, uh, similar to one of my last videos. Uh, the purpose of these tutorials is to basically kind of walk you through a typical interview question and explain my thought process, similar to what you would be doing in an interview, uh, explaining your thought process to the interviewer. Uh, this is good practice, just kind of go through these problems. You're going to be in a high stress situation, you want to be able to talk while also working on like a whiteboard or on a piece of paper. So it's uh, good to go over these common problems that uh, might be a little bit tricky. So the one we're going to go over today is checking whether a number is prime. Not. Um, now, if you think a number is prime, um, as I write this method, numbers prime if it is only divisible by one in itself. So we can kind of think of a really simple algorithm just to start off that would be able to do this. It might not be the most efficient. So we basically want to loop from two because we don't want to include one because every number is divisible by one um, to n and being our number just to check if any if there's any instance of a number in between these two that this n1 uh, if that's this n one's divisible then um, we want to return false on this so just basically to write that into code from words we start at 2 we go to n we increment i and then we check if n mod i equals equals 0 then we know, oh sorry, return false. We know it's definitely not prime. And if that never happens, then we return true. So that's our very, very simple method. So let's go ahead and test that with is prime five. Should return true, good. Is prime 10, should return false, good. So we know this is working. Now, of course, if you actually give this uh, answer to an interviewer, they're going to be like, whoa, 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 that's way too inefficient. Can you make it more efficient? So we kind of have to think of more of like how we can make this more efficient. So if you think about it, when you're comp trying to find a prime number, you only really have to, first off, you only really have to go through the odd numbers because every even number is going to be divisible by um, divisible by 2. So that gets rid of tons of numbers that we don't have to check anymore. Um, and another thing is you only really have to go up to the square root of n to check for numbers. Uh, the reason behind that being um, the first the square root of n is basically the middle in between the in between the common divisors of a number. So if you only check um, the first half, if you try and check the second half, it's just going to end up being redundant. You don't need to check any of those numbers because the ones in the first half are going to be contained in the second half, if that makes sense. Um, these things, these are things you're going to want to talk to your interview about, like when you're trying to explain this. So we can go ahead and well, the first thing we actually have to check when we do this method is whether or not uh, n, pretty sure n mod two equals equals zero. Then we go and return false. Um, okay. Um, Actually, we should probably do if n equals equals 2, just to check to see if it is 2. Probably the best way to go about it. And then we can have our for loop from int i equals 3, this time because we checked 2. And then we just do i times i, so that's going to equal to n. i times i because this would be mean the, or sorry, yeah, mean the square root of n. And then we just do i plus equals 2. Because the reason I did plus equals 2 here is because we want to skip the all the even numbers. So if you do 3 plus equals 2, it would be 5. That's an odd number. And the reason in behind this, of course, is because we only want to check the square root of numbers. If you had i squared, it's just a little uh, thing, i squared equals n, and then you solve that for i, you would have i equals square root of n. Because you do the square root of both sides in order to get i, which is why we do that i times i because we want to solve for the square root of n. Uh, if that makes sense, I just kind of rambled a bit there. Anyway, so after we do that, we can just basically do the same checking here, but in here, and that should do it. So let's go ahead and provide is prime 2 to here. Oh, build errors, build errors. Oops, forgot to return true. True is prime. Okay, so 
something went a little bit wrong here. This should have returned false, which means let's go ahead and change this. Maybe I, I was thinking a little bit silly there. Two. Okay. True. Okay, y is is prime to 10, 10, if 10 mod 2 equals equals 0. We should return false. Okay. <laughs> of course, these are going to be problems that you're going to be running into. Uh, unless you're much smarter than me, which could be the case. So let's try a prime number. True. Okay, good. That means this is working. Of course, it's going to work much faster than the other one. I'm curious, we might have to actually add a case for 2 because, yeah, this returns false here. So. You might want to add like an if case if it equals 2 to return, because 2 is a prime number, I'm pretty sure. That's some getting a little bit. Okay, there we go. And I'm sure there's some way to incorporate it in this, but I just can't think of it right now. But this one, far more, less efficient than this one. So you want to basically think of the simplest one first, talk your way through it, and then when they ask you for uh, the more efficient one, you want to kind of think of it more in depth, think of. Uh, what what could uh, happen? What can what can you do to basically make this instead of going? This is basically O n and this is O log n. I'm pretty sure, um, or O. Uh, not sure on my running time things, but basically this is a lot a lot more efficient than this one. So you want to basically uh, start, of course, start from the least efficient. If you know the most efficient one, then go ahead and throw that out there. But you have to be able to explain it. But try and just talk your way through it is the most important part about it. Hope I didn't ramble too much on that one. Um, well, that's it for this interview tutorial. Uh, if you'd like to know anything more about C Sharp, whatever, just leave a message, comment, rate, or like, which it is now. Uh, make sure to do whatever. Um, watch more of my videos. Quackware signing out.